This sequence, filmed during two and a half hours, shows the early cycles of division that give rise to a hollow embryo of the 11-armed sea star. Gastrulation of the embryo follows. This sequence shows gastrulation in an 11-armed sea star embryo. Clearly visible are the ectoderm, endoderm, and archenteron. This sequence shows early embryonic development in the frog Xenopus. Early cell divisions are followed by gastrulation, then neurulation, which involves the formation of the precursor to the vertebral column. Flagellated sperm released in the vagina by the male during intercourse find their way to the egg through the cervix and uterus. Their transport is aided by rhythmic contractions of the cervix and uterine wall. Hours later, the nuclei of the egg and sperm fuse to form a diploid zygote and begin the cell divisions that are the first stages of development. Within three or four days, the small ball of dividing cells arrives at the uterus where the monthly hormonal cycle has prepared the uterine wall to accept the new embryo. At five weeks, the embryo is a little over a centimeter in length and floats in a clear amniotic sac. The elongated brain is still separated into its major parts. Here the forebrain cavity, wedge-shaped hindbrain, and developing eye are visible, as are the paddle-like hands. At six weeks, the tail has begun to regress. Fingers appear. The sensory part of the eye, called the retina, has started to induce development of the lens and cornea. This slot on the back of the embryo is the spinal cord, which begins as a flat plate and will eventually close to form a tube. In the center is the lens of the eye. To the right is an ear, and to the left, the cerebral hemispheres are just beginning to form on the surface of the brain. The embryo's heart pumps blood through the umbilical cord and placenta to circulate oxygen, CO2, and nutrients. The umbilical cord emerges from the placenta and joins the embryo at the abdomen at a place that will eventually become the navel. At eight weeks, the nostrils have not yet opened, but the embryo exchanges amniotic fluid with its lungs through the open mouth. The bones and blood vessels of the hands can be clearly seen. In the developing leg are the Achilles tendon and calf muscle, the arm and elbow. At this stage, the external sex organs look the same in both sexes. This could be either a clitoris or a penis. This sequence shows embryonic development of three tadpoles, Xenopus, over 18 hours. Note that during the early cell divisions, the size of the embryo does not change.
This speeded up sequence shows embryonic development of a nematode worm within an egg. The sequence starts with the two nuclei fusing, fertilization, and proceeds with the subsequent cycles of cell division that give rise to the worm. This organism goes from a single cell to an adult with 1,000 cells in about three days. Since the worm is transparent, the fate of each cell in the developing embryo can be followed. This sequence shows the embryonic development of two zebrafish, Danny Orario, over 12 hours. This is a time-lapsed sequence of a region of the yolk sac of an embryonic killifish that is about two days old. The field of view is approximately 250 micrometers in diameter. In this region of the embryo, you can see a large black pigment cell, many migratory deep cells, and the beginnings of blood vessels formed by endothelial cells. These blood vessels must form in a carefully coordinated manner throughout the entire embryo to ensure a closed circulatory system. As you watch, you can see the very first blood cells to be pumped through these vessels. A small group of blood cells appear to get stuck in an unfinished blood vessel in the center of the screen. The endothelial cells remodel and the vessel opens up. Unlike the more mature, flattened blood cells you saw in the opening sequences of this video, these very young embryonic blood cells are rounded and often bleb. The time compression is 1 to 85. As we switch recording speeds so that events appear to happen much closer to real time, we see that the blood cells are actually slowly progressing through the blood vessels as the young heart just starts to pump. When we switch back to the original recording speed, the dynamics of blood cell movement become obvious. <laughs> 